All right, real quick, before we get to the actual video, uh, which I mostly shot yesterday, uh, I wanted to add a couple things. One of them is that this video, uh, that last half where I'm going through the presets, I had a little bit of a noise issue with the HX Stomp, and that's probably on me because as you hear uh, in the previous section where I was jamming, you don't hear any of that noise. So apparently I was doing something weird. So ignore the hiss <laughs> if you can. I try to edit it out as much as possible. Um, I also couldn't do the screen capture thing with the USB cable that also made a lot of noise for some reason, uh, which I don't have with my fractal stuff. Um, I think that's more about me learning how to use the, the Helix than anything else. Uh, and the other thing is that the presets, there's gonna be links below the video if you want the clean, the dirty preset, and a link to the Leon Todd impulse response. Uh, that'll all be down below, as well as affiliate links if you wanna support the channel. Uh, and then please like, subscribe, and all that other stuff. So without further ado, here's the video. All right, welcome to my video on me finally getting an HX Stomp. I've been an owner of Line 6 products for a couple decades, but not particularly a fan. I've had the original Bean Pod kind of deal. I had a Pod Pro that I used for a direct rack for some gigs that needed uh, not loud amps on stage. I had a Duo Verb head, and I think I've had some other stuff. And, I, you know, and being a teacher, I've experienced all of the consumer level Line 6 products. I just have never really cared for any of them. And when the Helix came out, I just was not very interested. If you've been watching my channel, you'd know that uh, I've become very, very bought into Fractal. Uh, I had an FM3 for the last year. I just got an FM9, uh, which I absolutely love. And that's the FM9 is my new main rig for gigs. And I do all kinds of stuff with it. Uh, I play uh, in a couple different playing situations. I do recording with it. I'm extremely happy with it. Uh, but I always have that that fear that maybe something's gonna happen. All right, there's always that need for backup amps. And you know, back before I got into the the modeling world this past year, um, I played either vintage amps. Um, I think you can see my uh, 1970 Deluxe Reverb back there, uh, or I had a Sir Badger 30, um, a handful of other vintage things. And the reality of it is that. Um, even new things like the Sur, they die on stage sometimes, <laughs> you know. And um, so I always had some kind of a backup solution for it. And usually it was something not too exciting. Like I've got um, a friend gave me one of those crate power block amps, uh, which I hated the sound of. I've had a couple other little, little things I could use. So I've, I've got a friend on my forum uh, and he actually had a, a, an HX Stomp. And he's been a direct guy for a long time. I think he's used Digitech. And right now he's really happy with the new boss modelers, but he thought he'd give the line six stuff a try and was never really happy with it. So he had an HX stomp virtually new in the box that he, he offered to sell me. And I took it cause I figured, Hey, you know what? Um, I have two reasons for needing this. And one of them is this whole idea of having a backup. I also teach at a, a charter arts high school. It's actually grade seven through 12. And uh, in the conservatory, I teach in two conservatories, and one of them is is the jazz conservatory, which means literally the school has six um, uh, Fender 65 twin reverb reaches for them to play through. And the popular music conservatory, and they've got, you know, besides uh, some amps and pedal board situations, they also have six or eight uh, Helix floorboards, uh, floors, the, either the uh, the light one or the the regular one. And nobody's really been maintaining them there. So I figured I needed to learn the Helix uh, ecosystem, we'll call it, just so I could uh, be productive at work. <laughs> so over Thanksgiving, I took home uh, an HX, uh, one of the floor units, learned how to program it, came up with a bunch of sounds for the students to use, uh, designed what they're going to do. And then my HX stomp arrived. And I realized that a lot of the stuff that I liked doing in the floor unit, you just couldn't do because of the... Uh, smaller amount of processing obviously in the in the small unit so for my uses I came up with a way of having almost like a channel switching amp with clean and, and dirty sounds that would get me through a gig at least even if it wasn't the uh, specific sounds I was using I'd have a clean amp with a clean boost and then an overdrive and then I have a dirty amp with a boost or solo sound and some modulation all right and in order to do that uh, I also am using a two button auxiliary switch. And I'll show you all this stuff here in a minute. Um, now I played one gig with it back in December, just to, uh, it was kind of a low volume gig, uh, but it was a great place to test it out. And it worked great. The guys in the band thought the sounds were great. 
and then I put it away and haven't really messed with it since. So um, we're going to kind of go through my sounds uh, here in a second. But what I'm going to uh, do right now is just kind of show you, this is my emergency box. So this is my emergency box. It's just a, a almost kind of like a fake Pelican case that has the Helix and some other stuff. So I could actually go to a gig just carrying this. Um, I could bring my EV monitor if I want, or I could just plug directly into a PA. Or I could just throw this in the car and have it as my extra amp. In years past, I would carry a couple hundred pounds worth of amps and giant pedal boards and PA stuff. And um, this going direct thing has made life a lot easier uh, in a lot of ways. But I still do bring a monitor speaker uh, for my stage volume, even though I'm also using in-ear monitors most of the time, too. It just kind of helps out. Uh, but honestly, I could do a whole gig with this thing if I needed to. And some of the gigs I do, like the Calypso music, this would actually be a really good solution for too. All right, so what's inside the box? Uh, we have um, a long power cable. It's like a 20 footer, I think. Um, we have some guitar cables. There's two of them. I like these Diodario ones. And then um, I've also got a microphone cable, which could be used for different things. Uh, I also have this bag here. And honestly, um, the one gig that I used the HX Stomp, I went direct into our mixer, uh, but I was able to compensate for the fact that the HX Stomp doesn't have uh, XLR outs on it like the Fractal stuff does. Uh, just in case in the future, I've got a direct box if I need it. Um, and just all the other junk that you would need. Um, you know, basically just my pile of junk thing. I found this case. It's actually, uh, I had a really cheap set of drum microphones. And in the case, we'll show you a picture here. It fits perfectly an HX stomp, the two button auxiliary switch I use, and then a TRS cable. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna we're gonna kind of go through the sounds and I'll explain what I'm doing. One thing I discovered is I'm not really a fan of even in the new um, Helix 3.5 any of the amp and cab things. Uh, so I'm using the impulse response I use the most in the fractal thing. That's kind of the great equalizer that helps me get the sounds that I like. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the uh, two channels that make this work as, a, as an amp for me on gigs. I've got a preset that's the clean and a preset that's the crunch. I'm going to be playing my uh, 2015 Fender American Standard Strat. It's got uh, Seymour Duncan Antiquity uh, single coils in the neck and middle and it's got a sir dsv pickup in the bridge all right so that is basically just the sound of the amp uh instead of using their cabinet I'm actually using an impulse response. Uh, I really like the Leon Todd TV Mix 7 impulse response. Uh, I use it with uh, uh, all my crunchy sounds on the Fractal, all the Marshall stuff, uh, and sometimes with some of the Fender amps. Um, with this, I just wanted one uh, cabinet that would actually sound consistent, that would be easy to use, so it makes it actually sound more like uh, one amp and not really a specific amp. I'm not really going super Fendery with this. I just want it to sound good. Um, the basic sound here is literally the amp the impulse response and a little bit of dynamic hall uh, reverb which you probably barely hear if I were to shut it off though you lose a little bit of the feel here the impulse response you can see the the low and high cuts uh, we were at 60 hertz and 70, uh, 7.5 kilohertz, uh, and that actually just kind of uh, trims this into the, the frequency range that you'd actually be hearing the speaker in in the real world. Um, that way there's not so much low end, it gets muddy on stage and gets into the bass area. Uh, it's not so high that it sounds crispy. Uh, it actually gives it a really well well defined sound. The first button is actually the, uh, it's their model of the exotic RC boost, actually not the RC boost, the EP boost, uh, and they call it the kinky boost on here. And I'm just using it basically as a clean boost to whatever sound I've got going on.
The second button is actually the uh, Paul Cochran Timmy model that they have in here, uh, which is basically a transparent boost. I think I'm using the middle. Uh, the, the, the original pedal has a uh, three-way toggle switch, and this is would be considered the middle position. <laughs> I can also stack the pedal so I can play rhythm on either sound and throw the uh, uh, EP boost on top of it. The other thing going on here uh, is the two button auxiliary switch. Uh, you run a TRS cable um, out of the, uh, the top here and it gives me two more buttons. So the first button here is just for the tuner. Um, so I always have access to that. And then the second button is for modulation. In the case of this preset, uh, it's set to chorus because usually if I'm going to be using this on, a, on one of my cover gigs, that's one of the sounds I use the most in the early part of the If I wanted to, I also have a second modulation block set up here for a little bit of phaser, like the small stone. All right, um, I like using that a lot on the cover gigs. Also, uh, I use it a bunch on like my Calypso gigs and stuff too. What's funny is that in real life, I'm a big Phase 90 fan. And on the Fractal, my phaser choice is usually the model of the, the script Phase 90. But for some reason, on the uh, HX Stomp, I, I like the small stone model a little bit better. So if we go to the other channel of this here. All right, the dirty sound here is their LG2204 mod. It's essentially the 2204 Marshall uh, that's been modified. So it's kind of like a 80s Van Halen-y kind of thing. Uh, I have the gain on 1.6. But... You know, honestly, for what I would normally do, having it lower here gives me plenty of drive. I'm using the same impulse response, uh, the uh, Leon Todd one. Um, in terms of uh, reverb, um, I'm going a little Van Halen with the plate reverb. not a lot but it's enough and then I also like using this uh, digital uh, vintage digital sound I've also got the uh, our favorite uh, Kinky Boost, the EP Booster, uh, as my boost on here. We also have the tuner in the same place. I don't have any modulation set up on this button at the moment. But this is basically enough to get me through a basic gig. Um, I'm not going to sit and try to make this sound as good as the Fractal stuff does. I'm sure I could get it to sound pretty good if I wanted to. If I really wanted to get into the Helix stuff, I'd just go ahead and get the floorboard uh, where it's got enough processing power to let me do all the stuff I would need and all the buttons and whatnot. Um, but I'm real happy with the Fractal stuff. In terms of this being a good backup, it sounds really good. I've used it on that one gig last month. I'll probably use it for some more stuff, especially the, uh, the Caribbean stuff, because I think it's a good clean sound. It'll work, and it's a very small form factor, so it's just really easy to carry around. So um, that's pretty much the deal with this. Um, I might uh, share some of the factory presets. I've got a little bit more video uh, that... Um, 
And then I'll probably tack on to the end of this so you can kind of hear what I do versus uh, what line six kind of sets up for you. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like the video, please go ahead and uh, hit like and subscribe and all that happy stuff. Share it if you want to. Um, the other thing is there's going to be links below the video. There are affiliate links to uh, all the products we talk about. Uh, we make a small commission, which helps the, uh, the channel. And we also have a gift shop if you want a jack mug or t-shirt or water bottle or anything else. Um, so go ahead and uh, we'll talk to you soon.